Hey you guys, I wanna do this quick story time in between Relentless, cause Relentless can probably go on for another, let's be honest, I have no idea how that story's going to end. But when I do have a story, and I know what the beginning and the middle and end's gonna look like, uh, I wanna go ahead and, and share it before I forget, okay? So this is called um, The Nightingale Diner. So the main character is Steve. Steve is in his mid fifties. Uh, Steve rolls over to the sound of his alarm clock going off and he rolls over and it's six o'clock and he turns off the alarm. He's tired, honey, he's mid fifties, he is tired. He knows he has to get up for work soon. He rolls over to his side to see that his wife, um, his wife Carolyn has already gotten up. She must be downstairs getting his breakfast together. They've been married for 30 years. Steve gets up, he goes into the bathroom, he showers, he looks into the mirror, looks at his little belly. <laughs> he had put on a couple of pounds the last 10, 15 years. He didn't know if it, if it was his, um, you know, the whiskey he would drink every now and then, or the egg sandwiches, whatever it is, he knew that he need to cut back some, right? So he go downstairs to see that his wife Carolyn was at the stove fixing breakfast. He goes over, he said, good morning, sweetheart, and gives her a kiss on the cheek. She said, oh, good morning, Steve. Did you sleep well, honey? He's like, yeah, not really. Unfortunately, Steve had not been sleeping well for the past five years or so. He's been having nightmares, waking up shaking, sweating, and he didn't know if it was stress from running the diner. See, Steve was the owner of a local diner called the Nightingale Diner. His father had ran it pre previously. This was the only job that Steve had, so he knew that eventually once his father passed away that he would be running the diner himself. Um, Steve and Curlin didn't have any children, by the way, you guys. They just never had children. And so uh, Steve's father died of a heart attack 15 years ago, and of course the diner was left to Steve to run. And it was a great diner, breakfast diner. They served breakfast and lunch mostly, okay? So Steve's like, yeah, I just wanna make sure that I get up to um, the uh, diner early because uh, Jerome was supposed to have locked up and Shirley apparently gave me a call last night, so I gotta make sure that everything's okay. Now Jerome was um, Carolyn's nephew, so basically Carolyn and Steve's nephew. He had had troubles with um, being on drugs and all that, but they wanted to give him a chance, so they figured they would have him to work at the diner. And so Jerome had a, a bad streak. He had been in and out of jail. He had been on drugs for a while, but for the last year or so, he had supposed to have been clean. But for some reason, he had left the freezer open last night and Shirley had called frantically. Um, Steve was too tired to go down there, so he figured he would get to the diner a little bit early to figure out what was going on, right? So, you know, Steve sits down, he has his breakfast and he heads down to the diner, which is just 15 minutes away from his home. He heads down in his old Ford pickup truck. He gets to the diner and, um, you know, he unlocks the doors and goes to the back and sure enough, the freezer is in disarray. Um, some of the meat they would definitely have to toss, but some of it in the back, it was okay. He has no idea why Jerome would be rummaging through the freezer um, when he specifically gave him instructions on how to lock up. And Jerome had been working in the diner for six months, and so he doesn't understand why all of a sudden he was acting this way. So the diner opens up, you guys, at seven o'clock, and so Steve needs to hurry up. Sure enough, he hears a bell, you know, he hears the front door chime, um, and it's Shirley. Miss Shirley had been working at the diner for 30 years. Steve was mustering up the strength to hear her complain. And so he could hear Shirley Durant, Steve, Steve, did you see what this nephew of yours did? And so Steve gets around, he's like, yeah, Shirley, I saw what he did. And so Shirley came around. Miss Shirley was all of 250 pounds and she stood at about five foot two, honey, she was round. And so she's like, well, what are you gonna do about it, Steve? Steve turned around to see Shirley standing in the doorway of the freezer with her hands on her hips. He's like, well, I'm gonna talk to him. She's like, well, you better because I can't imagine how much money you lost in all this meat. Look at all this, Steve. You have to throw all this stuff away. So Steve kind of rolled his eyes. He knew he did not have time for this. The diner was gonna open soon, so he wanted to make sure everything was okay and everything was set up at the front. He's like, Shirley, I know, I know. I will talk to him. So Shirley looks at him. She's like, well, you better. You better do something around here. 
Shirley goes up to the front. She manages the front of the diner um, where the people sits up at the at the bar almost. So Steve, you know, starts throwing away some of the meat that they can't salvage and closes the fridge, excuse me, closes the deep freezer. He goes back into his office and um, he sits down in his chair. He opens up the drawer and there's a bottle of whiskey there. He knew he shouldn't have one so early, but he had to get the edge off. So he poured himself a little bit of whiskey, took the shot and, you know, put the cap back on the bottle and closed the drawer. Uh, Steve was a functioning alcoholic, y'all. One of you know, it is what it is. So he gets up, go out in the front, and sees there's already there's already patrons. He looked down at his watch, and it was just 7:15. The diner had just been open for 15 minutes, but hey, people are hungry. So he says hello to his regulars and makes sure everything is okay. So about two hours go by, and Steve has to go have another drink. He's jittery. He, he's Set to point to where if he doesn't have a drink, he gets the shake. So he go back to his office, pours himself another shot of whiskey, and shoots it back. That's all of a sudden he hears a knock at the door. And it's Shirley. Steve, you won't believe who showed up, to your, up here today. Steve, Steve sits back and he's like, oh God. He said, come on in, Shirley. Shirley walks in. She doesn't even wait to be let in. So she's like, you won't believe who's up there. He's like, who, who, who's at the front, Shirley? She's like, yo, nephew, Jerome. Is his name Jerome, y'all? Jerome, yeah, his name is Jerome, yeah, Jerome. So he's like, what? He told Jerome, he called him when he found out that he left the freezer door open, he told him to not come up there. So Steve is confused. He's like, why is he here? She's like, I don't know. You need to go talk to him. He's acting real funny and he's scaring my customers. So you need to go up there and talk to him. See if he's like, okay, I will, I will. And she said, you need to um, hold off some on your next drink too. Shirley knew. <laughs> Shirley was like a second mother to Steve, and she knew that um, he had a drinking problem. So he's like, okay, okay. So he puts the cap on the bottle, puts it in the drawer, and slows the drawer slowly. He gets up, and he doesn't know why Jerome was up here at the diner when he told him, you do not need to be coming up in the diner. So he walks toward the front of the diner, and he sees Jerome, sure enough, sitting at one of the booths. And Jerome, you guys, was in his mid-20s, like I said, sketchy. Um, but something about him looked a little off to Steve. So Steve goes over to the, you know, area where he's sitting at. And he's like, Jerome, man, what was happening? What's wrong? Jerome looked at, up at him and sure enough, Steve knew something was wrong. His eyes were bloodshot. So Jerome was like kind of shaking and Steve sits down. He's like, are you okay? What's wrong, Jerome? And Jerome's like shaking. And he's like, did you see it? Did you see what was in the back? And so Steve was like, what are you talking about? I saw that you left the deep freezer open. You know, we lost a, quite a bit of meat back there. So Jerome was like, it was a panther. And so that's when Steve's hearts kind of sunk. And it was clear to him that he was having one of his episodes. And if he didn't get him out, he, there's no telling what Jerome would, would say next. So, so Steve gets up and he leans over on the other side of Jerome. He's like, come on, man, let's let's walk out. I can drive you home. And that's when Jerome snatches his arm away from Steve. He's like, I don't need to go in anywhere. We need to go back in the back and kill that panther. And so Steve was like, there's no panther in the back, Jerome. You know, are you hungry? You want me to get Shirley to fix you a plate? And so Jerome was like, I don't need her to fix me shit. Excuse the language, y'all. He's having an episode, baby more than an episode at this point you guys so steve knew that this was risky but then he said okay well you want to go back to the office and, and have a drink with me and that's when you know jerome then looked at him and shook his head so steve led him to the back and that's when shirley looked over to the side judging both of them she's like hmm so they go to the back and so you know steve looks at him and he could tell something was off. He wasn't sure if it, if it was because he wasn't taking his medication, if he was back on drugs or all the above, but he knew that he needed to get Jerome home and safe as soon as possible. So he opens up his drawer, pulls out two paper cups and pours um, Jerome a shot and he pours himself something. So Steve's like, are you, are you okay? And so at this point, you know, Jerome's like, well, when I came back here last night, I was, you know, putting the food back in the, in the freezer. And that's when I saw it. And so Steve looks at him so sad. He was like, look, man, there's no panther here. I know that you have your issues. Whatever Carolyn and I can do to help you, just let us know. That's when Jerome looked at him. He's like, you, you think I'm a liar? And so Steve's like, no, I don't think you're a liar. I just... 
I know there's no Black Panther out here. And that's when Shirley knocking on the door and then just lets herself in. And she's like, is y'all okay? You know, I got, I got people up here, Steve. You know, you, you gonna come up here? I got someone who, and that's when Jerome gets up. He's like, why are you always coming in here, old woman? That's when Shirley was like, now look here, son. You ain't gonna be talking to me like that. So that's when Jerome reveals that he actually has a weapon. He has a gun, you guys. And that's when Shirley was like, what? What the hell? And she runs towards the front door. She manages to get out. That's when Steve is like, he's now he's scared and his heart starts pounding. He's like, look, Jerome, man, I could drive you home. Put the gun away. Wherever you need, we can, we can handle it. Just put the gun away. Jerome was like, no, no, we got to go back into that, that freezer unk and find that, that panther. Steve didn't know what to do, so he wanted to make sure he didn't know if to get him in the back so the customers don't see him again afraid. But before he could even make up his mind, Jerome heads up to us the front and Steve races after him. Jerome makes it to the front. At this point, you guys, the diner has about 10, 15 other customers, right? Including Shirley, let me just say that. And Shirley's screaming, now Steve can hear screaming at the front. Jerome is waving the gun around and Steve is trying to ask him, put the gun down. I was like, no, I gotta kill him. I gotta, I gotta kill this panther. Before he could even stop him, Jerome points the gun at one of their longtime customers, Mr. Ben, who was all 70 years old, and he pulls the trigger. Um, ben falls over instantly, gun shot to the head. He dies on the spot, and Shirley starts screaming, and Jerome turns around and says, shut up. You shut up right now, you old woman. Shirley's leans back and she's shaking and she's afraid and jerome is like oh i gotta kill him i got i got that they, they he is in the episode you guys there's guys there's nothing that anyone could do at this point to stop him he sees a couple uh try to run towards the door and he shoots the woman in the back and she falls and so that's when steve's like no 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 you gotta stop this you gotta stop this jerome and he's like no Unc, i got i gotta kill him i gotta kill him that's when steve tackles him from the back and he tries to wrestle the gun away. And so at this point, Steve and Jerome are fighting over the gun. They're trying to get it. Jerome turns around and he shoots his uncle in the stomach. For a split second, something changes with Jerome's eyes and he looks down at his uncle and he's like, I'm sorry. And so Steve manages to get himself up. He crossed, he tries to cross in the back and he um, makes his way to the deep freezer. He can see two of the, it looks like two of the customers who tried to hide in the freezer too. So Steve goes in there and he's holding his, um, basically you know, he's holding his stomach, you know, cause his blood is coming out fast. And so he turns around, he's like, it's okay. We're gonna try to lock ourselves in here. So he closed the door. They could, all they could hear is gunshots at this point, just shooting. So Steve sits down and he could tell he's losing a lot of blood and he's closing his eyes, opening, closing, and all he sees is black, blackness. When he looks up, it's Shirley. Um, and all of a sudden they hear it go quiet. And Steve looks up again, he's opening and closing, and Shirley's like, Steve, Steve, are you okay? He's like, I, I'm sorry, Shirley. I should have gotten him out. She's like, it's okay. At this point, Shirley had knelt down next to him, and he could tell that she was, um, she, he could tell that she was dying, and she was basically succumbing to her wounds, too. And she looked pale in the face, but she was smiling. And Steve thought that was kind of odd. He, and Steve kept saying, you know, this can't be real. It, it just can't be happening. And that's when Shirley said, Actually, it is happening, Steve. And you know what happens next. And Steve looks at her oddly. He's like, I don't know, Shirley. I I'm sorry, I should've got Jerome in the back. And so that's when Shirley shook her head. She said, it's okay, Steve. This is, this is happening, but it'll happen again. And it'll keep happening like it's been happening for the last five years. And Steve looked at her confused. That's when he closed his eyes and darkness engulfed him. All right, and we're gonna cut to the front. Okay, so now we're, this is a cut scene. It's the front of the diner. There's a newscast out there. There's a young woman holding a microphone in front of the camera and she begins to speak. This is the scene of the Nightingale Massacre five years ago where the owner's nephew killed several patrons, including himself and the longtime owner, Mr. Steve. So we're gonna cut at six o'clock. Steve looks over. He sees that his wife, Curlin, had gotten up They've been married for 30 years and he knew that she had gotten up and was fixing himself some breakfast. He has some coughing and he gets ready to go to work. He has to open up the diner early because he got a call the night before from Shirley letting him know that his nephew Jerome had been there and had unfortunately left the deep freezer open. So Steve had to get there early to see what he could salvage and what needed to be, you know, basically what he could throw away or what he could keep. 
he gets there. Steve is all of a sudden has this uneasy feeling of deja vu. He can't shake it. He goes ahead and go into the diner. He opens it up. And that's where he can hear the doorbell at the front rings, uh, the door at the front chiming, and it must be Shirley. Steve, Steve, is that you? Are you back there? He's like, yes, yes, Shirley, come on, I'm in the back. He turns around and there is Miss Shirley in the doorway. Miss Shirley was all of 250 pounds, baby. She had both hands on her hip, hips looking at Steve. Oh, I can't believe that nephew's of yours, Steve. I can't believe he, you have to talk to him. Steve was like, oh, he turns around and he looks at her. He's like, and that's when Shirley was like, Steve, are you, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm just having a really, really bad case of deja vu there. And Miss Shirley looked at him and kind of smiled. And she's like, oh, honey, you have no idea. And she goes into the back. So you guys, this story, I've wanted to do a story like this for a while. So Steve, Miss Shirley, even Jerome and the other people that died in this diner, they are all stuck in this diner. They're stuck in their own little purgatory. Um, and they relive this every night and it's been going on for five years. So I hope this wasn't too disturbing for you guys. Um, I got this idea from one of my favorite short stories is a Stephen King short story. Some people believe that hell, the idea of hell is reenacting a moment in your life over and over. A purgatory is reliving a moment in your life over and over. So I wanted to spend that idea in the story time. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and that it wasn't too often disturbing for y'all. Okay, take care.